Electrical DIY. Love it or hate it, we need to make it as safe as we possibly can, even as a DIYer. And today I'm going to be showing you a few items that you need in your toolkit and I'll show you how to use them as well so that you can be safer when you're doing electrical DIY around your home. So one of the common little electrical DIY jobs that people like to do around the home is to change sockets like this one. And if you're doing a little job like this, there's a bunch of little tools that you really should have to keep yourself safe. Well, the first thing on the list is a socket tester like this one. This is just a cheap one. Uh, they don't have to be expensive and they help you in a bunch of different ways. Let me show you the most valuable way that I think you as a DIYer could use a socket tester. So you can see this socket has power going to it. Now we need to make sure that we're safe to work on the socket. And we will turn off the power to the circuit that this socket is on. And you need to leave your socket tester turned on and because they're quite loud, in some cases, you'll be able to hear the tone from your consumer unit so you'll know when the power goes off. And that way it gives you a little bit of reassurance that you've turned off the right circuit. So you can hear the socket test has gone off. So we're pretty confident that the power's gone off to that socket we're working on. But also, once we've changed that socket over, we can plug the tester in and it will tell us if there's any faults and essentially it will test so that we know that socket is wired up properly. Right, let's move on to safety tool number two. And don't forget, all the products and links to them will be in the description below if you want to go and grab yourself some. Now the next little tool that we need to use is a lockout device because we don't want anyone to come along and turn this breaker back on because let's say someone doesn't know you're working on the electrics in the house they think the sockets have gone off, they come along, they switch it on and guess what, you're going to get a nasty shock. So this is a lockout kit and I'm now going to show you how to use it. There's many different types out there, some of them are ridiculously expensive, you don't need anything fancy. To use the lockout kit just pop it over the MCB that's switched off and use a flathead screwdriver to turn the little screw inside. Don't need to do it too tight, just nip it onto the MCB. So that MCB now can't be turned back on. So we can use the notice supplied and the padlock to make sure that nobody can come along and switch that back on. Just lock the padlock and remove the key. Pop the key in your pocket. Well this next tool, the voltage tester, it might well be the most important safety tool that I would recommend for you as a DIYer undertaking little electrical jobs around the house. And it goes hand in hand with this, which is the proving unit. I would recommend that if you're gonna get one of these, you get one of these as well, because they kind of go hand in hand. Let me show you how they work. So we're fairly confident that this socket here is dead. We tested it with our socket tester and we're fairly confident that there's no power going to it. But it's really important that we test it with a voltage tester and if we have access to one, a proving unit. So let me show you how we do that. So our proving unit here is a simple device that'll tell us if our voltage tester is working. We just insert the probes into the proving unit and you can see there we're getting a voltage reading on our volt tester. First of all, we check our voltage tester on the proving unit. We then check between the live or line, depends what you want to call it. And you'll see that all we'll have here is continuity. We have no voltage being displayed. CPC to neutral. That's dead. And we're going to test CPC to live. And that's dead as well. We then use the proving unit to test again to check that our voltage tester did not go faulty whilst we were carrying out our test. If you don't have a proving unit, you can use a known source of electricity. So you would test that on a known source of electricity, you'd then carry out your test and go back to your known source of electricity and that would do the same thing. I'm going to throw this out there, all the tools in this bag do not replace competency and confidence and only undertake an electrical DIY work that you think you can safely undertake. So number four, the multi-detector. I like this Bosch one, but there's many, many different types on the market. And they're not that expensive, and certainly they're a lot less expensive than if you drill through a cable. But if you want to see how to repair a cable, I do have a video on that on the channel. Now you may think following regulations with cable zones would keep you safe. For example, on this socket here, 
there should be a cable either going vertically or horizontally and there shouldn't be cables in random places they should be within zones but that isn't always the case and that is where one of these come in and they are a real lifesaver so let me show you how to use it this particular one's really easy to use we just switch it on switch it to the electrical sign which is already on and we can go ahead and detect to see where the cables are in the wall and you can see that the detector has picked up a cable right above the socket where we'd expect it to be so that is within a zone but that might not always be the case so these are a really great little device they're not only good for checking for cables like this but you can check for metal and stud work as well so they're certainly worth having in the tool bag the next tool I recommend are these auto wire strippers and crimpers now you could argue how is that a safety tool well from a DIY's perspective and in my opinion, these take out the frustration of trying to use side cutters to strip your conductors. Now, if you're a really experienced electrician, you'll know that's probably quicker for you to do that than to use these. But for the DIY, let's say you're working on a light on the ceiling, you're struggling. These take out some of the possibility of you stripping a conductor too short and exposing too much copper or generally just getting frustrated and then making some other mistake i think they're great for diy electrical work but maybe you disagree if you disagree let me know in the comments below right. so next up i think we're up to number six on the list now uh, is insulated come on focus insulated hand tools like this screwdriver here they are just another form of protection in a long line of defense to stopping you getting a shock. Now, they may well do their job and they may stop things like arcing, certainly go through safe isolation and locking out and all that stuff before you even consider this as a safety tool. However, it could, in certain circumstances, be the last line of defense if a mistake has been made. So I would recommend using them. Now there's something I always have in the bag and I think as a electrical DIYer, you should have some too. Now, for the same reason as the wire strippers, I think that these actually up the game with safety. Now, you can get a few different types, but the best way goes are these clear ones. They're really good for the DIYer because they make it less likely that you won't insert the cable correctly because you can actually see to check that the conductor's all the way home. Just flip up the little levers and you'll be able to push the cable in flick the lever down and you can see that connector is not coming off. You can see how quick and easy these are to use and they eliminate the chances of error and therefore they're a lot safer for the DIYer. We've barely touched the surface with DIY electrical. Check out one of these videos here because they'll teach you a whole lot more and I'll see you guys in the next one.